Uh, this afternoon, Deputy Chief Gerald Smith, who's the Deputy Chief over investigation, is going to be providing an update and some information on a recent criminal investigation uh, that we initiated involving uh, one of our officers. At this time, I will turn it over to Chief Smith, who will uh, give that information. Chief. Flight Lieutenant Cott said, I am Deputy Chief Gerald Smith. I'm the Deputy Chief over the investigation unit. Two days ago, our investigators unit, uh, Crimes Against Children, received an allegation against one of our sworn employees that that employee had given a amount of alcohol to two children, one and six year old. Officer Robert Milton at the time was assigned to our airport division when this allegation came in. Uh, our detectives with the Crimes Against Children unit delved right into the allegations and during the investigations, facts were revealed that rose to the level of probable cause. Today, those facts were presented to a magistrate who thereby issued two counts of child abuse against Officer Milton. Those criminal summonses were given and was executed against Mr. Robert, I mean, excuse me, Mr. Milton. He will then thereby get his day in court at this time. Also, an internal affairs investigation has been launched and he will also be given his opportunity to tell his side of the story to an independent chain of command hearing here within the organization. Uh, to say that his actions are disappointing is really hard to search for a, another adjective. I'm pretty sure some people could come up with one, but his actions do not rise to the level and to the standards of this organization that have been tasked with the protecting and serving of the citizens of this community, especially the most vulnerable, including children. Uh, we will, as an organization, continue to hold all our employees, sworn and non-sworn, to a higher standard of actions and of behavior as we continue uh, to fulfill that obligation that we have of protecting and serving. So if anyone has any questions, I will answer those at this time. Jeff, I guess the children are one and six years old? Correct, they are. I mean, what's going on there? I mean, people one year old out, I mean, can, can you get a little more detail to how he gave alcohol to those that young? We, we are still investigating and collaborating with the district attorney, so I can't give out a lot of details, but I will tell you that uh, Mr. Milton was in control of the alcoholic beverage and also its container the entire time. How are the children? The children are okay at the time, at this time. Uh, uh, one thing that I should mention that I failed to mention before is that uh, the allegation came to us from the children's mother, who was also extremely concerned and called us directly about what took place. How is he connected with the children? Yes. Um, I'll see if I can keep this as simple as possible. The one and the six-year-old are brothers. Their mother is in common between the two. Mr. Milton is the father of the one-year-old. Is the couple together? Are they still married? Do you, you mean when she called, can you say? Um, they are not married, but they do have a, a relationship or a prior relationship. Um, I really can't get into explaining what their relationship is or how they view it uh, each between each other. Anyone else? So he is a sworn police officer, but he works at the airport. But correct. We do have sworn officers who work at the airport, and he has been with um, the city of Charlotte since May 2012. I mean, just to hear these allegations for children that are so young and everything to be given alcohol, what just, what is your reaction on that? I'm a father. Um, and I think everyone else in here who's an adult knows that you don't give kids alcohol. And the level of concern goes up as the age of the children go down. So, well, like I said before, being disappointed is probably the weakest adjective that we could come up with with his actions. Do you know if the alcohol was given to the one-year-old in like a bottle or something? Or I do know how it was given to that, but we're still investigating and collaborating with the district attorney's office at this time. But I will let you know that, like as I said before, Mr. Milton was in control of that container and the beverage the entire time. Now, how long did he work for you? I'm sorry? How long did he work for the company? No. He has been with the city of Charlotte since May 2012. 
And was this just one incident, or are you guys investigating multiple times that this could have happened for the children? This is the one time that we know of. Uh, but we will, we will say that if anybody else has witnessed anything against uh, uh, involving these children or involving Mr. Milton or anyone around these children, to by, by all means, give us a call uh, or give us DSS a call who is also doing their part in this investigation. Do we have exact charges? Two count, two misdemeanor counts of child abuse. Joe, just to be clear, these are misdemeanor charges. So, could he, in theory, continue to be a police officer, or what, what is his status right now? With the I will let you, uh, Chief Putney, would like to answer that question. A couple of quick things. Um, as you know, this is a criminal. It's been turned over. The uh, magistrate's given a uh, criminal summons, so um, they've been served. At this point, it goes to the district attorney for prosecution in the courts. Um, uh, and your follow-up, you complete your... Yeah, I was just asking, what's his status with yes. the police department? Yes, right now he's on it. In theory, continue to be a police officer since these are not felonies for misdemeanor. Um, so uh, the um, criminal would play itself out, but there's also, as you know, an in, a parallel internal. And um, we're going to investigate that. We take that very seriously. And whether or not the criminal plays out and there is a conviction, the internal can be just as severe. So I can't, you know, speak to the future. I've yet to be briefed. It's not even a, we haven't even had a board hearing yet. But um, um, you see what happens when people who are sworn here commit crimes. Um, that's about as specific as that can be before what we finish the investigation. Right now he's on administrative leave without pay. All right, one other thing I need to address, I need to clarify. I had a, a lieutenant ask me, uh, based on the comments I made um, at our, at our um, memorial service today, he thought I was calling out the leadership of the police department. And I was ta talking about leaders all over, but not within the organization as much. Uh, I'm proud of the leadership that our people are doing. Um, people want to say I'm talking to the mayor or the city manager. I can tell you unequivocally that's not the case. The mayor has been more than a leader for the city. I'm proud of the service she did. A couple months ago, we had some tough times, and she was there every step of the way. I can tell you from my experience as chief, that is rare air for a mayor, uh, even here in Charlotte. So um, never would I give a disparaging word towards her. City manager's been supportive as well. Um, but I did speak against irresponsible activism. Um, you can't lead and be an irresponsible activist. You can't do both. Leadership for a city like this deserves your undivided attention as it relates to leadership. You can't support employees and then say negative things about them at every, every, at every turn. I don't respect irresponsible activism like I don't respect irresponsible reform. Speaking to reform, this organization is doing a lot to improve. I respect our people for doing that. What I'm not going to do, though, and this is what I spoke to today, is let irresponsible activism make our job harder make our people less safe, and have more names added to the rolls on memorial services like today. Um, here's an example. We're talking about signal sidearm, and it's become a big deal with, in the area of activism. And I get that. People forget, though, guess which organization started that conversation? It wasn't an activist. It was the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. We saw a need. We want to be responsibly transparent. We start doing our due diligence. The problem is, the more we talk about that, the less we're going to be able to negotiate a good price for the taxpayers of our city. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about responsible leadership. And I'll tell you this. I also said, and you know me, I will not waver in this. I'm going to lead from the front. I'm going to speak to those who don't have a voice, even if it's our officers, because I'm not going to let irresponsible activism get them hurt or worse, especially not in a week like this. What are your questions? I know you have some, Mark. Sure. Yeah. Can you attach any names to that, Chief? I shall not. I shall not. But I can tell you unequivocally, it's not the mayor, it's not the city manager. Well, we noticed there was, I think, somebody got. I Let's come back to you, Mark. We're not going to dominate, <laughs> sure. Yes, sir. Uh, I thought you were still looking at me. No, sir. I'll let my friend Joe go. Uh, yes, we're Joe. We're on the same team, Mark. Uh, <laughs> uh, were you disappointed that the district attorney was the only elected official to come to this? Well, here's what's interesting. Um, he was there. Um, this is the other thing about the mayor, our mayor. Uh, she was going to be there. She was given the wrong time. So uh, she'll be there tonight when we do another event. 
She was uh, supposed to be there today, but she was given the wrong time. She was given an hour later than the start of the event. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, just here. Um, oh, you mentioned the mayor. You mentioned the city manager. Correct. You did not mention city council. Do you view any members of city council as uh, people who engage in irresponsible activism? I think uh, irresponsible activism shows through, judging by what they do and say, um, if they do anything. I'm not going to specifically tell you people, judge them by what they've done, if anything, but also see what they say. Um, when we're at our worst as an organization and you make statements that I think paint this profession and our officers in a bad light, I think that's irresponsible. You have video footage, you critique of me all the time, do so across all leadership channels. That's the best answer I'm going to give you. Mark? Sir, I think he followed up with what I was going to ask. It's amazing oh, how that works. It's amazing, sir. <laughs> Thank you, though. Who else? Listen, i got to end it on this note. Um, it bothers me that we're talking about an arrest and a challenge to leadership and irresponsible activism today at the culmination of a tough week for us as an organization and as a profession. We got York County who lost a member of their family. Iredale County who lost a member of their family. You know our story here in Mecklenburg County as a city and county uh, law enforcement agencies. Um, it's disappointing that we don't have more coverage for events like tonight where we celebrate the great work. Um, I would pray that this doesn't overshadow the arrest and a challenge to leadership that I stand behind with both feet because that's what this city deserves. So let's celebrate and, and uphold our officers and lift them up, especially during a tragic week like this week where some of the people that we're talking about gave their very lives to make you safer. I appreciate it. Thank you.